Okay, thank you very much. Uh, maybe I can close the door. So, okay, uh, it will be a very basic talk, I hope. Uh, and this is more or less uh, the first chapters of this book <laughs> that you probably know. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, uh, I, the aim of this talk is uh, to introduce affine group schemes, but before, of course, I will introduce affine schemes. If you uh, know Arthshorn <laughs> book, you probably already know schemes, uh, but today I will give a different point of view. My opinion is easier. And anyway, they are equivalent. Uh, and it is so easy that uh, it can be given in one talk. So uh, maybe. So, so it's different from traditional point of view? Probably, yes, but. It's easier yeah. than traditional point of view. Yes, yes. It depends on, uh, on what we uh, mean for uh, traditional. Yes, but for me, traditional point of view is. Uh, uh, EGA uh, in EGA of uh, Grothendieck and Lin. So Artshorn uh, uses this point of view. And uh, today I just use uh, this point of view, which is also uh, used in uh, EGA. It was known by Grothendieck, by everybody, but it's not the first approach we have to schemes. And it is uh, the more the but the useful one to introduce uh, certainly affine group schemes. And so I will do probably the first notions will be uh, even easier because I just recall uh, categories and factors. Uh, so for most of you, it will be uh, a repetition of uh, many things that uh, you already know. Uh, anyway, let me start. Uh, Okay, probably I can start with uh, a table of contents. Okay, so I, I will start with recalling what categories are. Then I will introduce representable functor. Then we will be able to introduce affine schemes. And finally, affine group schemes. Uh, possibly with some easy examples. So, So as you probably know, schemes are, uh, in some sense, a generalization of varieties. So uh, just uh, let me uh, talk about uh, André Neron uh, for a minute. <laughs> uh, he didn't like schemes at all. And so uh, you probably know the theory of Neron models. And he was able to construct this theory uh, without using uh, schemes, but uh, nowadays everybody uh, knows this theory uh, uh, using the schemes, and I cannot understand. I, I cannot see how you can uh, make this theory without using schemes. Anyway, uh, it, it is written in the introduction of the BLR book, BLR book, <laughs> uh, Bosch, uh, Lucten, Bonnert, uh, Renault. But, if you are interested, you can find neural models. OK, so anyway, <laughs> I just want to defend schemes against uh, varieties. <laughs> <laughs> so as you probably know, OK, let me denote by C a category, and it is uh, uh, a category is the is the data of is given by uh, 
objects that we denote by obc, okay? okay. So objects and a class of objects uh, and for any two objects a set of morphisms between such objects that satisfy some okay I will denote by f from a to b as usual a morphism in this category and uh, that satisfy some properties so uh, uh, okay we need a composition law between morphisms So just to fix ideas, uh, now I just uh, talk about categories in general. Uh, I will recall, I will recall it. But just to fix ideas, uh, you can think of the category of sets, of uh, the category of groups. I, I will recall them. Just but this is very general, more general than sets or groups. Okay, yeah, uh, maybe I will not spend too much time in, in this. So we have a class of objects, a set of morphins uh, for every pair of objects, and a, composi a composition law. Okay, this is the composition law. Okay, and this composition law is uh, associative. Okay, it satisfies associativity. Okay, I will not uh, write uh, down all the diagrams. Anyway, you know what associative means. And what else? Uh, Okay, for every object, then there exists a, uh, a unity morphism, so an identity morph, an identity morphism. Uh, so for every object, object we have uh, the identity morphisms, which is uh, such that it is defined as follows. C and B are uh, objects uh, again of uh, C. Uh, A, okay, let me just write it down without and what is okay that's the definition of uh, identity uh, identity map for every object okay and okay this is just the definition of a category so just to recall a class of objects a set of morphins and uh, a composition law um, once we have categories, as you probably know, if you uh, also already know uh, categories, uh, we we can we should define uh, functors, and I will do. And so we are still in point one. Uh, can I delete this? Yes, I can. <laughs> Anyway, we are still in point one. 
which is categories and then functors. Or probably, uh, let me give you some examples before, and and then I will give you example of, of functors later. So. As, an ex as examples, just consider uh, as category, the category uh, denoted by set, okay, uh, where uh, objects are uh, just sets, <laughs> as you know, and um, morphisms are uh, uh, function of morphisms, applications between uh, of sets, application between sets, anyway, functions, uh, function of sets, and you can also uh, these are the certainly the most familiar uh, categories. So the category of groups, okay, the objects are groups. And the set of morphemes is given by a uh, group homomorphisms. Then what else? But let me recall also AB, so AB. So the class of objects are uh, abelian groups, OK? And the homomorphisms are the same, the same as those in the category of group. OK, so there's no change uh, here. And let me give you a, a last example that will be used later. Uh, so since we are in, the, in algebraic geometry, uh, when I uh, will talk about a ring, it will be a commutative ring with unity, and every morphism between uh, between two such rings is a morphism uh, sending unity to unity. Okay. So the last example. So let us fix K a ring. Okay. In general, K is a field, but this is Waterhouse notation. <laughs> K is a ring, and uh, consider the category of K algebras. Okay, so objects, objects are just uh, uh, k-algebras, so uh, are, uh, what, what's a k-algebra in the case of a ring is just a, a commutative, of course, commutative and with unity. Rings A uh, provided with uh, a morphism, morphisms from K uh, to A. So these are just uh, objects. And taking two K algebras. K is commutative, right? Yes, 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 of course. So every, every ring in this talk will be commutative and with, with unity. Everything, yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, uh, everywhere will be, uh, every, but mm, not in general groups. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, so when I will talk, uh, whenever there will be a ring, it will be commutative with unity. And anyway, if you uh, don't like this so general case, just fix a field, K, any field, uh, the, your favorite one, uh, and it will work. Uh, so, what's the set of morphisms? Uh, so, what's a morphism in general? Uh, let me. A morphism is just. Uh, I don't know how to denote it. Okay. A morphism from A to B is just a, a, a morphism of a ring such that this diagram commutes. Okay, so yeah. no, nothing special. Think quickly why a k-algebra is it's a ring. So this ring, is, so the 
algebra is A, right? Capital A. Yes, yes. So, right. so, so the ring you can multiply. And it's also Z uh, K module. Yes, it is a K module uh, thanks to this structure. Yeah. Thanks to this morphism. So the ring homomorphism from K to A will give you what you have. It's the same thing. Yeah. So you have unit? Yes, yes, yes. You always have unit, right? Uh, uh, oh, uh, okay, yes, yes. Uh, everything is unit. And so here, unity of K goes to uh, unity of A. Right. Uh, ev uh, every time it will happen. So in, in general, so the most common uh, definition of algebra is for, uh, for uh, uh, rings over fields. So we say that it is a, a vector space over the field and a ring. Uh, if I have an element in algebra, this. Yes, yes, and of course. Multiply, yes, it's like not exactly an, an injection. So uh, uh, call this uh, phi or phi. Uh, so your multiplication by the element of k is just. Let me say. And this is just this. Yes, yes, yes. Oh. And. Okay, that's all for this category, but uh, uh, you should remember it because it will be the most important for uh, this talk, and we will see it uh, later. So now, uh, let me define what a functor is. Okay, so, okay, we can say it is point two. So point two was representable functors before uh, de define representable functors, let me recall what a functor is. So uh, what's a functor? Uh, a functor is uh, a rule that relates uh, two different categories. Not necessarily different, but <laughs> in general they are. So C and D are two categories. C and D are categories. And so F is a, let me, t let me say, a rule. Okay. Uh, so F is a functor if. So I, I'm going to define it. So uh, is in some sense is uh, um, a functor associated to. Uh, so what's a category? It's just the, the data of uh, uh, objects and morphisms. So if we want if we want to relate two categories, we need to associate to an object another object and to a morphism another morphism. Okay. So f is a functor. If uh, for every object in C, Fx is an object in D, okay, so F is, uh, I repeat, a rule uh, that associates to an object here, an object here. I cannot say a morphism uh, for the moment, uh, anyway. It's not in general. To define a morphism, we need a category. So mm -hmm. at the moment, we cannot. I didn't define the, the category of categories, and I will not do. Uh, and to every morphism, uh, okay. For every morphism, Okay, X and Y are still uh, objects in our category C. Let me write it uh, quickly. So F, big F associates uh, to small f uh, a morphism in the category D. From uh, Fx, to Fy, okay? We will see examples, so. If and 
this is a, a functor uh, satisfying some uh, properties. Uh, okay, we have a composition law that should be respected. So, and we have uh, an identity map for each object, okay, that should be respected also. So, Okay, if I'm not wrong. Okay, this is a functor. Uh, I don't want to write it uh, twice. Uh, so let me just uh, quickly say what's a cofunctor. Okay, I just say this. So uh, when you say functor, you can also say covariant functor. When you say cofunctor, you can also say contravariant functor. And so a cofunctor is the more, more or less the same, but what changes uh, is here. So, uh, so there's an inversion of arrows. So here, if you have an arrow from x to y, then here you have an arrow from fy to fx. So, I say respectively. Okay, uh, this is related to this. Okay, so this, and uh, you have a one star. Uh, since arrows are uh, inverted, also these are inverted. Okay, so. Is just to be com the most complete as possible. Is this a standard terminology? Or Sorry? Is it a standard terminology? Cofunctor? Cofunctor, yes, is probably standard, but too, uh, maybe too boring. And many people do not use it and just say functor in any case. Uh, I mean, if it is a, funct a, a covariant functor, contravariant functor, you can see in many papers just the word functor. And that's okay, but then you can. But anyway, it is, if you want to be the most precise as possible, you say functor and cofunctor. Uh, no, I'm just wondering if this name is standard terminology or only for some people. Yes, it is. Yes, okay. it, it is standard. It's so replacing the countervariant, uh, whatever those types. I, I mean, they are both standard. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Uh, your standard, <laughs> yes, yes. What, what is not standard is to use functor for cofunctor, uh, yeah, but uh, many people do. So I also do <laughs> from time to time. And anyway, uh, so before defining representable functors, uh, let me give you some examples. I do not delete this because I want to give examples using. Uh, the four categories I have defined. Okay, okay. So examples of functors. So the third one will be the most important <laughs> for, for us, for, for, for this talk. So the first example is uh, known as the, the easiest example of functor possible. So after the, the identity functor, <laughs> you, can also, you can always define a functor from C to C, sending each, objects, each object to itself and each morphing to itself. But after that, there's, uh, there's still a, an easy functor. Uh, which is, for example, the one going from uh, group uh, to the category of sets. And let me write like this. So 
to a group and this structure, you just associate the group without structure. So just the set, the set line down the structure of a group here. So to a group, you associate just a set. And this is also known as the forgetful functor because you forget the structure. Okay, yeah. Uh, and uh, this name, forgetful, is not only used for this situation. Anytime you forget some structure, it is a forgetful structure. For example, you can go to, uh, from the category of, uh, I don't know, uh, of algebras to the category of rings, and you just forget the structure of a, a, a K module, uh, or uh, something like that. There are many forgetful functors. This is the first one that I have in mind. Uh, then there's another very simple functor, which is uh, the one going from uh, ab to groups. So, uh, and this is quite, uh, uh, this is very easy because to an abelian group, uh, you associate itself, okay? But uh, what's, uh, so what's different here is that in, in some sense, I, I have not defined what essentially surjective means and I will not do, we do not need it today. Anyway, uh, if you know what surjective means, you can see that this functor is not uh, surjective. Uh, it's not the right word, but uh, for example, there are many not abelian group that cannot come from, uh, from this category. So uh, we say that this functor is not essential, essentially subjective. Uh, anyway, this is, but this is fully faithful. What does it mean? I, I will not give the, the right definition. I will just explain. This is a full, fully faithful functor, faithful. That means that uh, if on objects uh, it doesn't behave very well, it doesn't behave very well because uh, there are too many objects here uh, that are not here, but on morphisms uh, it behaves uh, very well in, in the sense that uh, morphisms here are exactly uh, morphisms here. So, uh, okay. So morphisms of abelian groups are exactly morphisms of groups. So there's no uh, new information. Uh, but this is not the, the this is not the good definition, I just, uh, I need to skip some steps. And, okay, we need more space for uh, this. You should probably erase the thing below. Sorry? You should probably erase those. This? Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, I don't need it. <laughs> You're right. So the, Third example is related to this example. Uh, no, sorry, not yet, not yet. Uh, no, it is even more important <laughs> because in the third example, I uh, I will finally define uh, this is the beginning to define representable functors. So. Now we come back uh, to the general situation. So C is any category. Well, C is any category and... Is it a section C or...? Sorry? Is it a section C or...? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, section is with this. <laughs> no, this is just uh, the third example. Uh, there's a circle because it is more important. <laughs> 
sorry, sorry, you, you're right. <laughs> Uh, it is okay. It is, a, it is an important example, and we will see why. So we define by uh, x and y as usual objects in uh, our category. Uh, okay, we first define the functor uh, x h like this. This is not standard notation. <laughs> uh, this, this is defined as uh, the homomorphism going. Okay. This is the functor home. I, I'm going to define it. Eh? So this is a functor going from C to the category of set, to the category set. And uh, what is uh, this functor? To any object uh, B, uh, we, I will let me use these notations that in general is for morphism, but uh, it's okay for today. Uh, to any object, okay, to any object, associate the set given by homomorphism in, in the category of set, in the, sorry, in the category C, from X to B. Okay, it's just a set by definition. Uh, anyway, it's a set. Uh, so I leave you as an exercise uh, to define uh, how this functor uh, works on uh, morphisms. Uh, but this is a special kind of functor because uh, well, we will see. And anyway, uh, simply observe that not every functor from C to set is an home functor. Mm, okay, uh, this will be also important. And uh, in a similar way, but since it will not be used uh, today, so I will just uh, define briefly. We can define H, Y, and this is standard notation. This is not, and this is <laughs> the functor home dot Y. Okay, is, it is similar. Uh, so here, X is fixed, so the left side is fixed, and here the right side is fixed. Uh, anyway, we do not uh, use the second uh, functor today. Uh, we can uh, concentrate to this one. If you don't understand why, you will understand in, in a while. And uh, just one word uh, to this functor is it is not just a functor, it is a cofunctor. Okay, this is the first the first example of cofunctor. But today we will not need this. So let me keep this example so so that we still have in mind it. So, so these are functors from any category to the category of set. So it's not just any, any category. So D is now fixed. So now we have, we have fixed set here. Here we have any category. And we can finally define a representable functor. So F is representable. Yes, yes, a uh, functor. So F is representable if, if there exists uh, an object uh, 
in uh, C such that F is uh, Fx is on X. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. There exists an object uh, such that for every object Y, Uh, F Y is the Did you use your notation? Uh, yes, but <laughs> Did you say F equal? Yes, it's not exactly equal. Yeah, that's why I I, I prefer to say uh, so you have no on the morphisms? Yeah, yes, of course, of course. But uh, I should first define uh, morphisms uh, between functors. And uh, then once I have morph morphisms between functors, I can define what uh, isomorphisms between functors are. It's not uh, difficult, it's, it's just long. Yeah. Uh, so I w will not do today. But so, okay, uh, forget it. Uh, apply forgetful functor to, <laughs> to what uh, I've said. Uh, so, you, okay, for, for today we, we, can just, we can just say this. Okay. Is it wrong or is it? Uh, yes, it's a little bit wrong uh, because they're 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 not equal. Uh, equality between functors doesn't mean anything, but they are isomorphic as functors. So you just need to define morphisms between functors. So isomorphism between functors. A little bit long, anyway. Uh, you can just consider if the, as uh, if they are equal. They were equal. Yeah. Okay, so now we know what a representable functor is, but it is exactly the same for a representable cofunctor. Okay, and okay, as promised in the abstract of my talk, uh, we have all the ingredients to define affine uh, uh, schemes. So if We, uh, instead of considering the, this general situation, C. Yeah, this, this, this is more like a color person instead of the setup. I mean, you know, the, the other functor, is that usually associated as representable, or is this one is representable? Uh, this one is representable. Really? I thought the, the thing should be on the right. It's like more like things map to it. Uh, I could be wrong. <laughs> I will, uh, no, it could be. Yeah, this is co this is a cofunctor, so this is co-representable. Okay. Uh, we, we we can see on morphisms. Uh, right, okay. uh, but okay, okay but uh, it will be clear in the examples. Also. Yes, uh, I think it will be clear in in this first example, and probably the only one that. We will uh, see. So, if instead of considering any C, just consider the category of K algebras that I uh, defined uh, later. So, what are representable functors? But this is a definition. <laughs> they they are affine K schemes. So, okay. Uh, uh, and affine. K scheme is a representable functor uh, from C to set. Okay, in this special case where C is K algebras. Uh, let me uh, recall some examples so that uh, this will be uh, quite clear, I hope. In general, examples always help. <laughs> so why, uh, so if you know, uh, for example, if you know uh, the traditional uh, definition of affine schemes 
over a k, uh, over a any ring k or any way. Uh, these are exactly the same, and I will try to explain why without without really telling. Uh, just okay, one one last uh, word on this definition. So this is a of a case scheme. Sorry. So this is a of a case scheme. Yes, yes, yes. This is uh, okay. uh, Waterhouse definition of, <laughs> of a fine case schemes. Uh, and but probably if you if you just want to talk about affine schemes, so you don't want to mention k, uh, you pro you have probably heard uh, affine scheme uh, without uh, any k. So that just means that k is equal to to z. So in this case, affine schemes are just affine z scheme. Okay, it's just a definition uh, anyway. Uh, so. Uh, Examples. No, theorem. <laughs> but this, um, this is an important result. Uh, uh, I think not too difficult to to prove. Uh, what Rouse does it in the very first pages. So uh, let A, so we set A as like this, OK? So let me take a K algebra of, of finite type. OK? Then uh, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, we can now use a notation. Uh, well, I will define here. OK, you remember this notation. It is just our uh, h i. It, is, it was uh, the functor ohm. OK, but let me define it from now on spec a. OK, I will explain the notation why. Why the notation is used like this. Then. The spike A is a functor. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. So, sorry, this is just a, for a moment, just, just a notation. OK. Uh, then, OK, spec A, since it is a functor, OK, uh, R, the, and I will recall it, what is it? It's just home in the category of k-algebras, so from A to R, is, is the set, is just the set of solutions. Of solutions in R n of these uh, polynomials. So finally, uh, what we have defined here, so our affine schemes are just uh, objects that uh, are very similar to uh, the, the zero locus of some polynomials, OK? Uh, so uh, if you want to recover your uh, loud varieties, just take uh, for uh, instead of k, just take c, the field of complex numbers. And uh, instead of r, take again c. <laughs> uh, so spec a of c, they are just uh, the points, you know, the points 
of your uh, polynomials, so of your varieties. Okay. Here we can take any uh, any k rings because we are in the category of k algebras. So uh, you just need not uh, not any ring, but just any k ring. That's yes, of course, of course. This is a very general uh, situation. And but in very particular cases, this is just uh, the usual uh, uh, zero locus of some polynomials. Okay. Uh, so this is the theorem, and wait, that's a theorem. Yes, yes, yes. This is a theorem. What do you need to prove? I mean, I thought that looks like uh, a or what, what is the thing you need to prove? Uh, yes, it's not exactly. Last uh, equality. Last. Mm, so one direction is quite uh, easy. Uh, okay. Anyway, this equality is not is not uh, exactly Sorry. trivial. Uh, anyway, it is not so Seven difficult. Five. Sorry, no, no. Uh, uh, it's probably half a page of uh, this book. Uh, but So let me tell you some examples. Uh, so when A, so we are always over K, yeah? So we are in the category uh, of K algebras. So if A is Kx, take, again, take in your favorite field here if you want, but uh, a ring is sufficient. Uh, then what's spec A? It is uh, what is in general known as the affine line over K. So I repeat, if instead of K you just use C, you recover the, your, affine, uh, your affine complex line. Uh, and then, uh, okay, but let me, okay, I will need it uh, later. Uh, we, we can give it a, a group structure. Uh, I, will exp I will probably explain you how. So let me uh, also uh, call it as GA, probably GAK, just to uh, recall that we are over K. So this is a easier example. So what is A? Uh, A stands for uh, additive, oh. but I, 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 if I have time, I will explain it later. Um, it's just that uh, I will define it now, uh, not to write down so the. So far, you have said nothing because you're saying the same thing. Functor, you're calling different names. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. It's just a another notation. <laughs> so it's a first example. It's a second example. So let me define, oh sorry. So uh, if you want to uh, write it in this uh, uh, notation, it is just k x y x y minus one. And so spec a, it is here denoted as GMA, uh, sorry, GMK, and here M stands for uh, uh, multiplicative. And uh, let us see why briefly. Because GMK R for any ring, uh, for any K algebra R. Uh, it, but please verify it. It, it's, it is very easy according to this theorem. It's just R star. Uh, so it has a group structure. Uh, 
a multiplicative group structure. And here, but since. So G8K would be just the R. Just R. OK. OK, I. But it's so far, just a set, right? If you, um, so if you yes, yes, for the moment, uh, there's no exactly a group structure. I, I, we will see in a, in a second what a, I will define what a group object is in, in a category. And then uh, this will be uh, reinterpreted reinterpreted as a group object in the category of a fine scheme. Uh, anyway, uh, I, I, I think I have time. We can now delete this. Ah, so uh, why this notation? Why spec A? Uh, because uh, I will not prove it. Uh, because uh, so spec A, spec A uh, as I define it, uh, is equivalent. So the category of K affine scheme, as I have uh, just defined, is equivalent to the category of uh, affine schemes uh, over uh, K as defined traditionally. And traditionally, spec A is just the spectrum of a ring. Okay, what's the spectrum of a ring is just uh, uh, the set of all, of all the prime ideals in a uh, in a, that's why we still use spec, because these two categories are equivalent. But I will not use this point of view today. Anyway, just know that. Which two are equivalent? I mean, the, your uh, category of long curves? This category of affine K scheme, uh -huh. uh, K schemes, is uh, equivalent to the category of affine K schemes as defined in uh, EGA by Goten Dicker, as you can find in uh, Art Sean book. Uh, so, and what is a. Uh, and a fine scheme in this uh, notation is just the spectrum of a ring. So here, the spectrum of uh, A, for example, and the spectrum of a ring is just the set of, uh, of prime ideas. Why? Uh, so here, we don't need to define a, a, to introduce a topology on spec A. That's what you should do in, a, in the traditional uh, uh, definition. But they are equivalent. They are equivalent, and it is it is explained in in you need this book and Archon book because uh, why they are equivalent if you know something because uh, they are both anti-equivalent to the category of K algebras, uh, so that's why they are equivalent. But uh, forget it if you don't like anti-equivalence and. This is, I, I also think so because uh, because you have for each for each ring a year you have points. That's why uh, we also call this functor the functor of points, because uh, for every ring you have points, so solutions of some polynomials. So if you want to, if you want the, the zero locus of I don't know <laughs> this, but you just take this functor and you consider the zero locus on any ring. And it, it will provide uh, the, the solution required. Uh, so in general, it is not so easy to see that uh, it's the case. So that this defines the solution of some polynomials. So hmm. so I, I do not have time to define fiber products and final objects in, in categories. If you want to, to be very, uh, uh, if, if you want to do everything perfect in category theories, you need to spend yeah, hours yeah. and hours yeah, in. Sure. Maybe if you, if you do not define it, and maybe just pretend you already did. And then yes, 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 I, I, I need to use it. Okay. <laughs> so okay. I, I, I will do. So anyway, let's see be a category, a category uh, uh, 
with okay with fiber products products and the final object final object uh, then we define uh, so forget it for a moment I will explain it in a moment so f for example in the category of set uh, fiber products are just if you know fiber products in the usual sense on sets just consider uh, products that's enough for today products of, of set okay just consider this case for example uh, and consider an object. So G is a group object. If and a final object in the category of sets is just a point. Any point is a final object. The final object in the category of a fine scheme, of K a fine scheme, is just spec K. Anyway, uh, so G, G is a group object if uh, we have uh, three morphisms in the category of. So a morphism uh, called multiplication. So the final object is denoted as E in general, it's just an element. And just consider it, uh, so if C is the category of set, I'm just going to define what a group is in a very uh, difficult uh, way. Different. Different way. Yes, yes, not so difficult. Yes, of course. OK, if we have three morphisms satisfying uh, certain properties, too long to write it down. <laughs> anyway, just. Recall me the first one. Just let me write the, the first one. So these are the property properties that uh, are necessary for these morphisms to give G a group structure. Okay, I have. Uh, we have these morphisms here. We have the identity on G and the multiplication in the uh, and other similar uh, diagram for U and I and this simply means that the, the law is uh, associative so the law M is associative and that U is actually an, the unity and I is uh, an inverse okay I don't have time to be more uh, precise. Anyway, an object uh, with these uh, three morphisms and diagrams like those I try to uh, define is a group object. So in the category of set, a group object is just a group. So probably I, I can end with this. I can stop with this. So category and group objects. So if the category is set, the group, group objects are just group. But if the category is group, <laughs> the group objects are every object. <laughs> this is stupid, but it is nice. <laughs> uh, if the category is the category of topological space, spaces that I didn't define today, uh, so the group objects are uh, topological group topological group and okay here we have the same if the category is uh, affine case schemes so we have the definition of affine k group schemes for group objects in the category in this category affine k group schemes so more generally, I didn't define the category of schemes. If you have the category of schemes, if you know, so group objects are just group schemes. And they contain uh, affine group schemes. 
they also contain elliptic curves, abelian varieties that are not contained here because they are not affine, they are uh, proper. Maybe I can stop here. If you want, uh, I have not time to give more example of group schemes. Uh, the first one is this one, so GA. It is a group scheme. You can verify it is a group scheme. And the second one is GM. You can also verify it is a group scheme. Why? Because... Yeah, but wait. How do you define the product in this case? Uh, okay, okay. Uh, ah, a product is... In this case, in, in our case, it's very easy uh, because a product uh, here is just uh, the spectrum uh, of, of the, of the product. tensor product. I mean, yeah. uh, so, uh, the so it's a product in the set, right? No, 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 no. No, 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 in schemes, uh, it doesn't work like this. Okay, on so schemes. what is the product? So the product uh, here is just uh, the spectrum of the tensor product over K uh, of A and B over K. This, is, uh, this plays the role of fiber product in uh, the category of K-affine schemes. Um, it is a very hard theorem to prove that, not, not in affine case, but in, in ge the general case, it is a hard theorem to prove that the category of schemes has fiber products. It is not so easy. Anyway, I, I can stop uh, here. Okay, did you define this offline group scheme? 